My name is Dr. Mariam. So in this video, we're going to be explaining the Rene and the Weber test. So both the Rene and the Weber test are used to test hearing of the patient. They need to be done together and interpreted in the context of each other to be able to get an accurate result. So you can't do one without doing the other and expect to get a proper result. So how we start is we're going to start with the Rene test. The way to do it is we make the tuning fork vibrate, place it on the mastoid process of the patient, and we ask the patient if the patient can hear it. If he can hear it, we ask the patient to tell us when he stops hearing it. When he stops hearing it, we take the vibrating to new fork. We don't make it stop vibrating, we still keep it vibrating and we bring it next to the ear of the patient. The patient should be able to hear it in a normal situation because air conduction should be more than bone conduction. So we'll demonstrate a normal test now. Sir, can you hear it? Yes. Tell me when you stop hearing it. Yes, stop. Can you hear it now? Yes. Okay, thank you. But well, before we conclude, we need to do the Weber test. So to do the Weber test, we ask the patient. Sir, can you please hear it? Yes. Is it the same on both ears or different? The same. Okay. So if it's the same, then this is a normal situation and we can say the patient has normal hearing. We'll look at an abnormal situation now. Sir, can you hear it? Yes. Tell me when it stops. It has stopped. Can you hear it now? It has stopped. Can you hear it yes or no? No. Okay. So in this patient, he is not able to hear the tuning fork after we bring it to the next to the ear, meaning bone conduction in this patient is more than air conduction. So in this case, we can say that since bone conduction is no is more than air conduction. The, the patient probably has conductive hearing loss. Then we test on the other ear to confirm. Can you hear it, sir? Tell me when it stopped. Can stop. Can you hear it? Yes. In the case of this patient, this ear is abnormal because bone conduction is more than air conduction, while this ear is normal because air conduction is more than bone conduction. So we can suspect that this patient has conductive hearing loss. Let's try an example of an abnormal Weber test. Sir, can you please hear it? Yes, I can hear it. Is it the same on both ears or it's louder? No, it's louder at this side. At this side. Okay, so now the patient is hearing it, but it seems to be louder on one ear, meaning it's lateralizing into that ear. So for us to be able to interpret this now, we actually need the results of the Rene test. So for example, if we do the Rene test and the patient has conductive hearing loss in this ear, meaning the bone conduction was more than ear conduction, if we do the Weber test, and the patient says he hears it louder on that same ear, then we can conclude that that patient does have conductive hearing loss. Because again, the, the sound is lateralizing through the bone into that ear. But let's take a different example now. Sir, can you hear it? Yes, I can. Is it the same on both sides or louder on one ear? It's louder on one ear. Okay, so this is another example of an abnormal Weber test. The patient is saying that the sound is lateralizing to the right ear. Again, before we can conclude on the type of hearing loss the patient has, we need to have the result of our Rene test. So let's say we do our Rene test and air conduction is more than bone conduction. So the patient was able to hear it when we move it to the ear, meaning air conduction is more than bone conduction, and air conduction is more than bone conduction on the other side too. But then we do the Weber, and the patient says he's hearing it louder on this ear. This means that the other ear now has sensory neural hearing loss. Let me repeat. In the case of a Rene test, where we have a, the Rene test is normal in both ears, and we do a Weber test, and the patient says he hears it louder on one ear. The ear that he hears it loudest in is normal, and the other ear is abnormal, meaning it has sensory neural hearing loss, which is the opposite. If you do a Weber test and the patient hears it loudest in one ear, and you look at the result of your Rene test, and your Rene test was abnormal for bone conduction in that ear, and during the Weber test, the patient hears it louder in that ear, then it's that ear with the pathology for conductive hearing loss. But if you do a Rene test, and it's normal on both ears, and you do a Weber test, and the patient hears it louder in one ear, then that ear that he hears it loudest is, is normal, because your Rene was normal, and then it's the other ear that's abnormal for sensory neural hearing loss. 
So let me emphasize that the Rene test can only tell you if your ear is normal or if you have conducted hearing loss. You need the result of the Weber test to be able to conclude if there is sensory neural hearing loss. So hope that you understood everything I said. If you don't, please leave all your questions in the comment and I'll make sure to answer them. Like the video, subscribe, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.